Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 4 of the chapter Chemical Kinetics. In this video, I am going to tell you about the factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction. And out of these, we will be studying the first factor, but let us first just tabulate or uh, make a list of the factors that would affect the rate of a chemical reaction. The first factor that affects the rate of a chemical reaction is the concentration of the reactants or the products. Actually, the reactants, because the, when the reaction starts, you only have reactants. And as time proceeds, the concentration of the reactants goes on decreasing. And therefore, the rate of the reaction also goes on decreasing, which means that the rate of a reaction directly depends on the concentration of the reactants. And if you take in terms of the products, initially there were no products, more and more products are formed, the rate of the reaction goes on decreasing. Basically, it is dependent on how many, uh, how much of the uh, reactant is present. So that is the first factor, that is the concentration of the reactant or the product affects the rate of a reaction. The second factor would be temperature. We know that some reactions take place faster at higher temperatures and some reactions take place faster at slower temperatures. Therefore, temperature, the appropriate temperature, what would be to favor the chemical reaction. So the rate would also depend on the temperature. And the third factor is the presence of a catalyst. A catalyst is a compound or any, any uh, ion, it may be a free radical, whatever. The presence of something that helps increase the rate of a reaction. So such a substance itself does not participate in the chemical reaction, but it affects the rate of the reaction. In addition to these regular positive catalysts which increase the rate of a reaction, you may also have negative catalysts which are, which are put in order to decrease the rate of a reaction. So, the presence of a catalyst also alters the rate of a reaction. So, these are the three factors that affect the rate of a reaction, concentration, temperature and catalyst. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the concentration. As I told you that we initially, when the reaction starts, we only have reactants and we do not have products. So the rate of the reaction, the number of molecules of the reactants is the highest and the number of collisions, the way they collide with each other and they, because the number is so large, the number of collisions is more, the more the number of collisions, more the molecules, the reactants come in contact and the more chance they get to react. Therefore, the rate of the reaction is very high in the beginning. But as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of the reactants goes on decreasing. And as the concentration of the reactants goes on decreasing, the number of collisions decreases. And if number of collisions, if the reactants are not coming in contact as much, the rate of the reaction will go down. So this shows that the rate of a reaction is directly dependent on the concentration of the reactants. It is, it is, um, it is directly dependent on it. The more the concentration of the reactants, the more is the rate of a reaction. Now this rate, dependence of the rate of a reaction on concentration is given by an expression which is known as the rate law or it is also called the rate equation. It is also called the rate expression. So dependence of the rate on concentration of one or more reactants or products is represented by the rate law or rate equation or rate expression. And from this rate law, rate equation or rate expression, you can also find out what is rate constant. So let us understand what the rate law is or what the rate equation, rate expression is and what is rate constant. Let us assume a hypothetical chemical reaction. In this reaction, you have two reactants A and B. So A moles of A are reacting with B moles of B to give you C moles of C and D moles of D. If you had to write down the rate expression for this, how would I write? Rate is, I told you, it is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants. But what is the relationship? It is directly proportional to the concentration of the two reactants A and B. But A and B are raised to the powers of certain exponents. And what are these exponents? These exponents are X and Y. They are not A and B. They are not the stoichiometric coefficients. They are raised to some powers, 
which may be the stoichiometric coefficients or may, they may not be the stoichiometric coefficient also. So they are raised to certain powers and that forms the rate expression. We know that what is rate? Rate is the decrease in the concentration of the reactant upon the, the change in time, the time in which the decrease took place. So we know we know this from the previous video. So rate can be written as minus dr, where d is the, a small change in the concentration of the reactant upon dt over a small interval of time. So that is dt. And if you get the remove the sign of proportionality, you get a proportionality constant which is equal to k. It is this k which is known as the rate constant because it is the proportionality constant in the rate equation. So we call k rate constant. So rate constant, uh, the rate that is minus dr, why do we have this minus? Because it is a reactant. As you know, I would encourage you to watch the previous video. Why do we use the negative sign here? Because the concentration of the reactant continuously decreases and rate cannot have a negative value. Therefore, we always put a negative when we are talking of, when we are calculating rate in terms of reactants. So, minus dr upon dt would be equal to k a to the power x and b to the power y. This is known as the rate law or rate expression. And since this is minus dr upon dt, it is the differential form. So, this is known as the differential rate equation. And k is known as the rate constant. So, what is rate law? Rate law would now be defined as the expression in which a reaction rate is given, the reaction rate is given in terms of the molar concentrations, these are molarity, the box brackets represent molarity. So if it is given in terms of the molar concentration of the reactants or the products with each term and it is given um, as the, sorry, it is given in terms of the molar concentrations of the reactants raised to the power and each term is raised to the power to some power and this power may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient of that reactant. So we say the concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power which may or may not be the same as the stoichiometric coefficient of the reacting species in a balanced chemical equation. What does this tell us? that this power is not the same as that of a balanced chemical equation. Theoretically, what we have is only balanced chemical equations. So if this power is something different from the stoichiometric coefficient which you get from balanced chemical equation, it means that you cannot get it theoretically. You have to find out these powers experimentally. They have to be determined experimentally. Whatever this power is, you, you cannot tell from the equation. It may be equal to A or B, but it may not be equal to A or B too. So you have to experimentally determine the, the values of X and Y, the exponents X and Y. Let us take one example. This is an example of 2NO plus O2 giving, giving you 2NO2, right? Now, 2NO, we take, uh, we carry out four experiments. And in the four experiments, we change the concentrations turn by turn of the different things. And let us see how do we come, up, come to know the value of, uh, in the rate expression, what are the values of X and Y to the powers of, uh, I mean the powers to which NO and O2 have to be raised in the rate expression. Initially in this experiment, 0 0.30 molar uh, solution of NO was taken and 0 0.30 molar solution of oxygen was taken and the reaction was carried out and the rate of the reaction was calculated that is the initial concentration final concentration of the reactants that is the change in the concentration divided by the time and the rate came out to be equal to 0 0.096 and whatever was the time and the uh, and the concentration so it will be molar concentration upon seconds or minutes whatever it was calculated in. In the second trial what did the scientist do? He doubled the concentration of NO but kept oxygen the concentration of oxygen constant and now calculated the rate of the reaction and when he calculated the rate of the reaction he found the rate was 0.384 which was four times, it means the concentration term NO should be raised, uh, should be raised two times in order for the reaction to be, to, the rate of the reaction to go up four times. 
the power should have been 2. That is how it is exponentially dependent on it. So if the power is 2, the rate of the reaction went up 4 times. So from this he understood that the power to which NO should be raised is 2. And then in the third experiment, he took the concentration of NO to be the initial concentration that was 0 0.30 and this time changed the concentration of oxygen. And when he changed the concentration only of oxygen, whatever change will occur will occur because of the change in concentration of oxygen. And he found that the rate of the reaction doubled from the original one. From this he said that oxygen should be raised to the power of 1 because the reaction has, uh, the rate of the reaction has doubled. Therefore, it should be a power of 1. And in the fourth experiment, he doubled both the concentrations and the reaction rate, of course, went up as a result exponentially due to the doubling of both the reactants. From this, he derived the rate law. And he said that the rate law for this would be rate is, he wrote the differential part, minus dr upon dt would be equal to k, that is rate constant, into the reactant NO was to the power of 2. Experimentally, he had determined this. And O2 was to the power of 1. What did he notice? He noticed that these powers were equal to the, the stoichiometric coefficients of the uh, in the balanced chemical equation. This was only a coincidence that in this case, the powers x and y are equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. But this is not necessary. In other, there are other examples where we find when we experimentally determine these that these powers may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. So these are two examples where we do it. What are these? You have CHCl3 reacting with chlorine to give you CCl4 plus HCl. And experimentally for this reaction, it was determined that the rate, that is experimental rate expression that was given, rate was equal to K, CHCl3 to the power of one, and Cl2 to the power of half. Cl2 to the power of half which means that the powers to which the concentrations were raised in the rate expression were not equal, were not the same as the stoichiometric coefficients. For CHCl3 it was 1, but for Cl2 it was to the power of half. Now in this second experiment, you have ethyl ethanoate reacting with water to give you acetic acid and ethanol. And we find that the rate in the rate expression K, that is rate, is equal to K, rate constant, into ethyl ethanoate, the concentration of ethyl ethanoate to the power of 1. And that is the stoichiometric coefficient here. But for water, the stoichiometric coefficient is 1. But experimentally, we find that the rate, uh, the concentration, the rate depends, the exponent for this, for water, the concentration of water is 0. So from these two examples, we see that the exponents to which the concentrations of the reactants have to be raised need not be the stoichiometric coefficients, right? And therefore, what does this tell us? That there is no way that you can, you can deduce or theoretically calculate the rate uh, expression. The rate expression has to be determined experimentally. It can only be done and then you can give the powers. So therefore, for the finding out of x and y, you need to perform an experiment and then get the rate expression. You cannot get it theoretically from a balanced chemical equation. So rate law cannot be predicted theoretically. It has to be determined experimentally. So this is what we learn from this fact that the exponents may be different from the stoichiometric coefficients. With this, I finished this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.